Okay, guys, it's um, Sunday. In a little while, we're going to shoot the sealer and the base. Then we're going to let it sit overnight. Then we're going to come out tomorrow morning. So roughly around a 12, 13-hour sit time for the base. That's going to allow uh, all the solvents to evaporate out of it since we're going to stack so heavy on it. Uh, and this is what we're going to do. We have, we'll go through everything, the JGA 502. We're going to use the sealer and the base. Let's see if we get that to stand. We're going to use the DeVilbus MGB with the agitated cup for the flake. Okay, both those guns are clean and ready to go. I just went through them both again. Okay, we have our epoxy that we're going to reduce down so it's going to be one to one to one. We're going to use that as a sealer. We're going to go to the Deltron, which is right there. There's some flakes sitting on it, which is solar gold. That's going to be our base. Then we're going to go to the House of Color SG150, which is a carrier for the flake. Our flakes, we have some 15 thousands, and I'm going to mix in some 4 thousands with it. So it'll be mostly 15 thousands and 4 thousands that fills in the areas. Then we're going to go to the Autobahn wet wet setup for the clear, which I have a lot more than that of. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to knock out the epoxy and the base today. Tomorrow is supposed to be a much nicer day. It is almost 90% humidity today. Um, then we'll start laying down the flake and start laying on the clear. And we'll see how it lands. Uh, to see how much clear I'm going to need, how much white sand I have to do. Then we're going to do a re-clear on the roof. So, that's about it guys. The only thing we have to do in the garage is we just have to wet down the floor. Uh, I want to put a top to deflect the air here front of the door so it doesn't come in the top it has to go down and uh, that's about it go over the car one more time make sure we're good and uh, just decide where I was going to use and we should be good to go so as you guys know it's been a long time or a long process to get here so the weather's holding me back today I was supposed to do this today but uh, I'm definitely not shooting all this material on a 95% or 90% humidity day. That's, that would be ridiculous. So, tomorrow's only supposed to be 60%. So, I guess that's it, guys. I'm going to go through the guns one more time, which I just did, and I'm going to make sure we're good to go. Uh, start setting myself up. Some of the stuff will just leave the garage. This table's not staying in here. Uh, I just set this up to work out here and uh, to break down the guns, which I did. And uh, we should be good to go. So with that, I guess there'll be a video later on tonight with the car sitting in base. Uh, I would say I hope I like the color, but it doesn't really matter. Flake's gonna cover like 95% of it. So you just try and get the... There you go. There it looks like mustard. We'll see how it looks. And uh, I'd say we're good. I'd definitely say we're good. Um, every one of these components is supposedly compatible with the other. So only time's going to tell, isn't it? So the last thing was to choose another clear. Um, it was a toss up between going with the Deltron clear going with that clear and going with the uh, SPI clear. Um, a lot of people go with the SPI clear, they like it. A lot of good uh, reviews, a lot of good people talking about it on the forum. But when it came to doing it old school with a siphon fee gun, they don't want to know nothing about it. So if they don't want to know nothing about it, just, I can't ask them any questions and they don't want to help me. So that ruled that out and then that left me between the wet wet and the uh, Deltron clear, which I think was 2012, 2021. I think it was a 2002. I forgot which one. I looked at two different ones. Just shot one of them a while back and didn't have a problem with it. Liked it. 
but um, the wet wet they make videos on it you can watch them spraying it in real world situations with dust and dirt and all the stuff it's not like okay here it is you know it's a gimmick they show you how it operates and flows and I was already on the phone multiple times they'll answer any questions he'll pick up the phone at any time and help you through it so and they're not afraid to talk siphon guns and like I said real world stuff so and I'm a real world guy I'm not in the shop so I'm gonna give it a shot I got nothing to lose I think of it this way guys even if the 789 coats of stuff on this car the last thing on the bottom is still the metal not like I have tons of body work in the roof if it all fails I can scrape it off start again with a lesson learned so not that I want that but if you keep that in the back of your mind uh, I think it'll keep the tension down if I keep the tension down it keeps my back from locking if my back doesn't lock I won't fall to the floor <laughs> so this is as close as we're going to get to an old school flake job minus the lacquer I guess that's it guys. I'm gonna call it quits for a little while. Got a couple of things to do. I'll be back out here uh, probably six o'clock tonight and I'll get going with the process. So like I said I'm looking for like a 12 to maybe 13 hour window between the base coat and me starting to put the uh, intercoat on. So you can just do it and keep going on but that's normal. About two to three coats are clear. So, but we're going to be stacking a lot more stuff on, so. And if you read up on some of the forums, most people recommend that you let that, that base sit for like 12 hours, 8 to 12 hours. And uh, if you get the last little bit of solvent out of it or as much as you can, it doesn't go into your clear and cause your clear to die back. So, nice little uh, tip and trick. And just, just to answer a question that I received from my buddy, the Roobster. Yes, Junior will be painting the hood of this car. Uh, it'll be in here all by itself when we do it. Um, if it turns out to be a different sheen than the rest of the car, so be it. It doesn't matter to me. Some things don't matter, some things do. I'm always going to do the best I could do, or try and do the best I could do. And then when stuff goes wrong, it's like, okay, at least I gave it my best shot. Rather than just half acid. But uh, yes, he will be painting the hood. And no, we have not fully decided what we're doing to the rest of the car. So I have the paint to do what I was originally going to do. It's sitting there, it's sitting up there with the rest of the paint. So it's not a material issue. So we want to see what this car is going to look like with the flaked roof. And then we're going to step back and we're going to think about it. So I don't want to say something, I don't want to say I'm going to do something I'm not going to do and I don't want to get anybody's hopes up and I don't want to disappoint anybody if you're looking for a certain look um, I'm just very undecided I don't want to, I really don't want to paint the car again a second time, this is going to be it this is how the car is going to spend the rest of its life until either I kick off or whatever happens so and uh, there is a certain look I'm going for and I don't know if I could do it or can't do it. So, with that said, don't underestimate what we do to the rest of the car. You know what I mean? This is uh, very similar to the comment I left for you, Dizzy, with the rat rod when he, you know, he's asking for help. It's from within. I build stuff from within. It doesn't matter. Not that it doesn't matter if anybody likes it. I don't build it to please other people, that's a better way of wording it, the other way it just sounds arrogant, and I'm not arrogant, at least I don't try to be, so, like I said, we got to get the front done, or the top done, get the air back in the tires, and put her out in the sunlight, and I'm going to take some pictures of the car, and then just use my imagination, 